thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love and care of us. Hallelujah. 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 shall continue be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear, therefore, and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, 
and were like, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. The angel of the Lord encampeth around and about them that, that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Praise God. Let's meet. Go before the Lord this morning. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity to come before your throne of grace this morning, Father. That you have given us that opportunity, Father, to your children who you called out of the darkness into the light, Father. We praise you for what you've done through your son, Jesus Christ, at the cross, Father. Blood was shed for our sins, Father God. And we thank you that you helped us have the faith to trust what you did through him and believe in him, Father, so we could become your children and have this wonderful opportunity to come before you today, Father God. Now, Father God, many times we fall short in thoughts and deeds, Father God, but we just pray this morning, Father, that you forgive us, Father, and consider our petitions today, Father God. Father God, we know that you are a healer, so, Father God, we lift up all those with COVID and other ailments, Father, because we know that there's no one that uh, can heal like you, Father. There's no disease or anything, Father, that you can't just speak and it will be, be removed out of our lives, Father God. Father God, you are a protector, Father. We just praise you for that. You protect us in so many ways, Father. You're protecting us right now through all this chaos and madness in the world. We just give you praise for that today, Father God. Father God, we know that you are comforted today, Father. We lift up all those who are bored today, Father. All those who have lost loved ones and have troubled spirits, Father. We just pray that you would comfort their hearts today, Father. Father, you, you are all in all, Father. You are our provider. We lift, up, we lift up those who you will have in struggles with provisions, Father God, but we trust that you will bring about the provisions that they need, Father God. Father God, there is none like you, Father. We just thank you for the opportunity to come before you today and give you praise. We just pray that our praises uh, will be, uh, that you will be glad in our praises Day, that they will bring about a smile on your face, Father, because you are worthy. Now, Father God, we just lift up the man of God who's going to bring you a word today, Pastor Chucky. Just pray that you be with him and use him in a way that only you can, Father. And we pray for those that the word is going out to, Father, that they'll be able to receive it, Father. But you know that your word is true and will not come back for it. So we thank you for what you've done and what you're doing right now, what you have planned for us. We can't even believe and understand. It's so good. And we just praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. The Lord reigneth, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of our salvation. The Lord reigneth. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. 
Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the God of our salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, Blessed be the God of our salvation. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, Lord, the Lord reigneth, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the God of our salvation. The Lord, Lord reigneth. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, 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 glory to the rock, honor to the rock, Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. church said, if you'll open your Bible, uh, the scripture verses that are under consideration have been read already, but uh, I will read them again. So turn to Psalms number 34. First thing I want to do is give pledge of allegiance to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. I will read it to be wise. I will practice it to be holy. And I will believe it to be saved. Amen. Psalm number 34. Now this psalm is written by uh, David. Not only the king of Israel, but the sweet sons. He was known for his song. So we're just going to look at a few verses 
uh, in this 34 number. First thing that he says here in verse one, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, Pastor, reading this verse does the all times uh, include COVID time. It says all, I will bless the Lord at all times. And we are in that season of COVID. And that's why not many are here today. They are at home with COVID. And uh, we want to pray for them. All things are possible with God. Yeah, so when the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times, it includes COVID time. COVID, COVID uh, is among our people. And that's why they are not here today. Because those that we talked to, we told them, if you have COVID, stay home. We, we, we don't want it. <laughs> and uh, we are hoping we don't get it. And that's why we have been vaccinated. Now, vaccination is no guarantee that you won't catch it. But they say if you do, uh, severeness of it won't be as bad as it would be if you were never vaccinated. And so we encourage our people to get vaccinated. And, and practice social distance, wear your mask. And now they're telling us the ones that we have are not good enough. And so they have manufactured another one. And I have two, three of them, and I'm going to get the latest one. <laughs> Amen. I don't know about you, but I won't live long as I can. And I'm going to die when I can't help it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to eat right. I'm going to do my exercise. I'm going to do all of that. And, uh, and I'm going to trust the rest of the Lord. You know, God's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all things. Amen. Because he has the power. Yeah. So David says, I will bless the Lord at all times, at all times. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The name of Jesus. Don't pray in anyone else's name. You pray in Jesus' name because he is our intercessor. Yeah, he's the one who takes our prayers. He polishes them up, you know, and make them acceptable to God. Because the writer, the, one of the writers said, we don't know how to pray as we ought to. No, we really don't. But the Lord Jesus knows how to pray as we ought to pray. And so we want to pray in his name. 
he has credits in heaven. Yes. And uh, whenever believers pray, the Lord Jesus inter intercepts the prayer. And he makes it a, a acceptable to God, the Father. Because you all know, you know, unless we are taught how to pray, we don't know how to pray. We, we really don't. But the Lord Jesus would spend all night in prayer. And he was the son of God. And you know where that leaves us. He prayed all night. He prayed all night. Prayed on all occasions. He gave thanks always. Always giving them thanks. That's how we learn as children that when we sit down to eat, we give thanks. I, 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 did, I didn't hear all of y'all say that. We, we give thanks because the food that's on our table, uh, you can trace it to the farms and all of that, but it ultimately came from God. And so when we sit down to eat, we, we give God thanks. <laughs> and then we start eating. When I was a boy and we get to the table and, and we didn't say thanks first, they'll just, they'll just push you away from the table. And, and you'd be sitting there trying to figure out, now why did they do that? Uh, they did it because you didn't give thanks. Yeah, you, 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 we don't want to be like the little girl who visited, uh, you know, her relatives. And when they all sat down, they gave thanks before they ate and they looked around. I've told you this before, but you forgot it. So I'm going to mention it again. And they saw the little girl that was visiting. She never gave thanks. And they said, why, 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 why didn't you thank God for the food? She said, why? Why? Because God gave you. She said, no, God didn't give me any food. I always came from Safeways. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, he says here uh, in Ephesians 5, 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, so those of you who are home streaming and Zooming and you have COVID, give thanks to God. Amen. That's what it said, it includes COVID. I said it includes COVID. So, so, so give God thanks. Amen. And stay home. <laughs> until you get better and then you come on back because even in here we you know we're gonna wear our mask we're gonna practice social distancing giving thanks always for all things unto god in the name of the lord jesus christ that's ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20. amen now look at this second verse here he said, and this is Psalm 34 and verse 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear that roar and be glad. That's, that's verse 2. Now in 1 Corinthians, uh, you might want to turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians. And the reason why I'm putting emphasis on the first, because that must be a second. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse 1. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 31. You know, when, when you get my age, these, 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 these letters get awful small. 
<laughs> soon and very soon, I'm going to have to get bifocals. Yeah, but this is First Corinthians. I want you to, I want you to turn there. First Corinthians, chapter one. Okay. Now I want us to look at verse thirty-one. First Corinthians chapter one and verse thirty-one. It reads that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Yeah. So give God the glory. Give him glory. He is not only worthy, but glory is due him. Yeah, glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. I don't ever want to take people for granted. The people in this church are so wonderful, so loving, and so kind. Amen. I just experienced that again on my blank, blank birthday. <laughs> I got so many cards, so many cards, and the cards have had something in the cards that uh, made me smile. Yeah, money. <laughs> uh, isn't it wonderful to be part of a congregation where people have uh, the gift of giving? Yeah, they give uh, on my birthday, they give at Christmas, they give in other times of the year. People in this church are giving people. Amen. And they not only give God the tithe, but they, they give me, you know, some of the other money. Y'all know the tithe belongs to God. Amen. And so y'all have been so wonderful. And you just give, and you just give, and you just give. And somebody, I think one of my granddaughters will say, uh, Papa, you're going to, send thank you notes to all those people. Why don't you just get up and make a public announcement and say, I want to thank all of you. No, I said, no, if these people take time to give me money, I'm going to take time to send them a thank you card. Amen. Amen. If you didn't, if you didn't get your thank you card, then don't tell nobody because I'm, I'm going to assume you got it. Yeah, but 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 we want to be a giving people. Give thanks to God. And if people are kind to you and they are giving people, give them thanks also. I said give them thanks also. Amen. Amen. We're talking about giving thanks to God always. Now, Pastor, what about uh, when you get sick? Mm -hmm. When you get sick, are we supposed to give God thanks? Yes. Is it not included in the all things? Amen. Uh, yeah, uh, you're going to have to say amen because you know it's the truth. Amen. Sometimes. Uh, we are on our bed of affliction, and we have a tremendous opportunity during that time that if our lives are not right before God, it's an opportunity to get right. Yeah, because listen, all sickness is not unto death. You can get sick and you can get well. All, of, all sickness is not unto death. Amen. So when you when you, when you get sick, take your aspirins. Take whatever medicine doctors give you. Uh, I'm so glad I don't live in the country anymore because when we were kids and we got sick, they would give us cast off. 
You all never lived in the country. You don't know anything about cast oil. And if they didn't give us cast oil, they gave us three sixes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and, and we didn't lack it. The part that we lacked was when they made corn shuck tea. Uh, they would take the, uh, the, the, you know, the corn, covering of the corn when it's ripe, and they would boil it in water. And then they would put 90 proof bourbon in that. <laughs> now I'm, I'm telling you what the Lord lives, loves, and that's the truth. And they would ball that, those, the corn shucks, and made it into tea, and then they put that bourbon in there. And we were very happy. <laughs> very happy. happy. Now, now, they don't do that anymore. Amen. They, 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 they learned that they were not supposed to give the children any 90 proof alcohol. <laughs> but it sure tastes good. It tastes good. And it would get rid of that cold. Amen. 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 And so give God thanks in all things. Now, now notice this next verse here. Uh, I'm in Psalms. Mm -hmm. And the reason they said Psalms is, is so wonderful for Christians because it is pre-digested food. Did you ever hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Honey is pre-digested food. It's been digested by the bees. And now they give it to human beings. Yeah, Ephesians 5.20, I said that. Okay, now, verse 2. I'm going to read verse 2. Psalms 34 and verse 2. Psalms 34, and there it is. Verse 2, my soul. To brag on. Hmm? The Warriors? That's a good team. They just won the championship. I've got some friends. They are Laker friends. And they were swearing about the Lakers. I said, they didn't even make the playoffs. <laughs> I, I brag about the Warriors. Amen. They're the champions. Uh, and I had the courage, I mean, I had the privilege to shake hands with the man who is going down in history as the greatest shooter of all time. His name is Stephen Curry. I shook hands with him. I'm putting together a list of people, the names of people that I've shook hands with. It's a long list. Praise God, Stephen Curry is among them. Yeah, let me get back to him. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and how much shall hear thereof and be glad. And then notice verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. During trials, in tribulation, in sickness, in hard times. Yeah, let's magnify the Lord. God is in control. I've been trying to tell people that this COVID, uh, God sent it. I didn't get many amen, but it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. God even sent uh, the pestilence on his own people. Y'all remember when David committed that sin with Bathsheba. God said to David, now because of your sin, uh -huh, I'm going to send a plague. And I'm going to give you the option to say 
that the, I will judge you or I'll turn you over to the enemy and let the enemy judge you. You know what David said? I would rather fall into the hands of God because there's mercy <laughs> with God. Yeah. And if, and, if, and if he fell into the hands of the enemy, they were going to kill him. But, but what did David do? He prayed and he asked God to forgive him. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to thy, to thy loving kindness and thy tender mercy, blot out my transgression. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. For against thee and thee only have I seen done this evil in your sight. And you know what? God forgave him. God, aren't you glad God forgives people? How many times have you seen? <laughs> that's, that's all right. Don't tell nobody. I mean, um, but I go to confession. I've told you this. I don't know how many times. I go to confession every day. Every day. I confess my sins to God. The sins of omission and the sins of commission. You, you can sin by what you don't do. God commands that we pay tithes. And if we don't, amen, we need to confess our sin. And then pay your tithes. I think that's all right. I'm going up. Get off of that soapbox. Amen. Yeah. And so now he says here in chapter 34. We, we've gone over this. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise shall continually be. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble uh, shall hear thereof and be glad. And then he invites us all. Oh, magnify. The Lord with me, let us exalt his name together. Cooperate worship is more beneficial than private worship. Amen. Because when we pray privately, there may not be any singing. But when we pray publicly, as we do this morning, uh, this afternoon now we have singing don't you think cassandra sing well yeah. don't you think Tori know how to manipulate them keys up there yeah this is cooperative worship it's better than private worship oh magnify the lord with me let us Exalt his name together. Let's do it together. Yes. <laughs> Look at verse four. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. How many of you are afraid to go to sleep? Anybody? I used to be afraid to go to sleep for fear I would not wake up. And now I do not fear going to sleep. Because you know why? Because if I don't wake up, I'm going to be absent from the body. And I'm going to be present with the Lord. And the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord is far better. It's far better going to be in, in glory with the Savior and the Father, where the wicked ceases to trouble <laughs> and the weary is at rest. I, I, I don't want to die yet. You, you don't either. But, but, but we have this promise that when we are absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. That's what the Bible says. We know, Paul says, that when we are absent from the body, we are present with the law, which is far better. Amen. Uh, but I know, you know, we don't like to talk about it, but I'm just trying to tell you it's far better. 
because there ain't no taxes in heaven. <laughs> yeah, no taxes in heaven. No taxes. I don't know about you, but come tax season, I agree a little bit. You see, y'all may y'all may be able to, you know, to balance it out so that you get some, you know, some money back. But I'm self-employed. I don't know if you know that. I'm a pastor, and as a pastor, when I make out my income tax, they put me in the category of being self-employed. And every year, I have to pay taxes over and above what I've already paid. I pay them quarterly. And then when I fill out my tax return, the tax man says, you owe so much and so much. But I praise God. Amen. In all things, give thanks to God. Yes. And, and he says, my soul make her boast in the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's look at verse 4. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. David had lots of trouble. Can I tell you some? He had trouble in his own life with his own conduct. And then because of his sin, it trickled down to every member of his family. Amen. Those children. One of the boys raped his own sister in David's family. And, God, and, and the prophet had already told him, because of what you've done, the sword will never depart from your house. You have caused the enemy to blaspheme God because of your sin with Bathsheba. Well, she must have been some kind of fox. <laughs> She must have been a foxy woman. And, and, and I think David would have never known that if he had been on the battlefield with his soldiers. But while his, his soldier was on the battlefield, he was on the rooftop of his palace watching Bathsheba take a bath in the nude. You all read the Bible. It's in the Bible. Don't look at me like that. It's in the Bible. That she was. She had a part in it too. You can't blame it all on David. Any woman out there and, and, and where she can be seen taking a bath in her birth clothes. <laughs> and David just lost it. Had her husband killed, did he not? Yeah. Yes, the man, but you know what the good part about David? When he sinned, he confessed it. I know some people, I know some, you may not, that they have sinned big time, but they justify it. If somebody else is fault, no, no, no. If you do it, it's your fault. Amen. Yield not to temptation. <laughs> For yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight manfully on what dark passion subdue. I forget that part. Look ever to Jesus, he'll carry you through something like that. Amen. Yeah. I'm, I'm teaching this morning. Yeah. I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Notice verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. 
the angel of the Lord. We used to sing that song about the angels all night and all day, the angels watching over me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you 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 just don't be safe during the night and 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 and, and, and get up wide awoke in the morning because of some good you've done. Amen. It's, it's the blessing of Almighty God, and we need to give him praise. Yeah, I, I've told you this before, that where, where I lived as a boy, they had a Baptist church, and they had a holiness church, just two of them. And I don't know why the Baptists called even those people in the other church holiness people, all Christians are supposed to be holy. Amen. Not just Baptist, not just Methodist, Presbyterian, Catholic, or whoever. All of God's people are to be holy because the scripture says, be holy for God is holy. Yeah, but there they were singing and dancing. And in the Baptist church, you couldn't dance. <laughs> you better not. Come in there dancing. They'll tell you, quick, sit down. No dancing in here. If you want to dance, go over to the holiness church. Yeah. But it's all right for Christians to dance as long as it's, the dance is holy. Amen. You all remember, remember uh, uh, Mother, uh, Mother Pruitt? <laughs> Mother Pruitt, that was that was your your mother-in-law. That was B's mother-in-law. And how many Sundays did I see Mother Pruitt get out of her seat by where Rosalind stood? And she would dance all the way down that aisle. And somebody would complain, there she go. Just dancing. Well, it's okay as long as it's holy. It's just that a lot of dancing I see, it is not holy. <laughs> I'm going to keep reading here. Okay. It says, the angel of the Lord encamped us round about them to fear him. Oh, taste it, verse 8, and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Y'all know the Lord is good. Yeah. Oh, fear the Lord. Ye saints. Ye saints. All of God's people are saints. If you're not a saint, you ain't. But all Christians are saints. Well, where do some people get this idea that some Christians are not saints? God calls us saints. Amen. You may not act saintly or live saintly, but you're a saint. You, you have been born again. Yeah, you, you have been washed in the blood of Jesus. Yeah, you stand before God justified because of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, amen. We can't brag and boast about it. It's what he did. Amen. Amen. I'm just teaching, that's all. This poor man tried, cried, and the Lord heard him say to him, the angel of the Lord encamped him, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Verse 9, oh, fear the Lord. He hears saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. God, according to Philippians 4, 19, will supply. He does supply. All of our needs, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. The young lion lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Why? Because God supplies it. I tell you, the Lord is good. 
If you have lived to be past 70, you, you ought to say amen when I say the Lord is good. They, they're dying every day. Babies die. Teenagers die. Some of the teenagers are dying because of the drugs. Come on, help me. Yeah, but, but if, you, if you have lived three score years and 10 and plus some, oh, praise God. Amen. And he's not just keeping you around here so you can just say it. God has left us who have lived a long time here for a reason. Try to help the young people. I got some in my family. I'm telling them, look, you do better if you just do it God's way. Yeah. Yeah. Do it God's way. But don't expect God to keep on blessing you as he has blessed some. You violating the rules. You got to do it God's way. And so I, we got what? Grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren. And I think great, great, great. <laughs> There's so many we can't keep up. <laughs> and the only time that we hear from them is when it's this day birthday. No, oh, man, give me a break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, fear the Lord, these saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. Amen. I'm going to stop there because, you know, uh, I could just go on. <laughs> I, I told you this, too, before, but I'm going to say it because uh, it fits here. Uh, the young man was preaching one Sunday in this church, and uh, he had his manuscript, and uh, he had all of the pages numbered. And, and he would read this page one, page two, and he kept reading and he kept reading and he kept reading. And he said, finally, he said, you know, I could go on and on. And one of the ladies jumped up and said, no, you can't. Because you're all a lot of stuff and you know it. <laughs> so I'm going to quit. <laughs> Say amen. Yeah, Let, let's, let's obey God's word. Amen. Let's obey his word. Let's, let's live in harmony with his will. And God will bless us as he blessed the man who wrote it. Amen. Okay, at this time, we're going to extend the invitation. There may be someone present, some in streaming and Zooming land. You have never trusted the Lord Jesus to be your personal savior. I want to tell you, God loves you so much he gave his son. And the son loves you so much he gave his life. And what he's asking all unrepentant people to do is to open the door of your life and invite me to come in. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Anyone hears my voice, open the door. I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. Amen. If you will open the door of your life, ask Jesus to come in and be your Savior and Lord. He'll come in. And when he comes in, salvation comes in, eternal life comes in. Oh, beloved, do it today. You may not have this opportunity again. Do it today. Just ask him to come into your life, be your Savior and Lord. And when he comes in, he's going to give you the gift of eternal life. Do it today. As Sister Foster sings, do it today. And if you do it, write us, call 
us, email us, say, Pastor, on that day you preached, I want you to know I accepted Christ as my personal Savior. We will, we will help you grow in the faith. And so let us know if you make that decision. So now we'll be given the announcements for today, Sunday, June 26th. Praise report for Gene Johnson's son, Maverick. He is now at home. Please, yeah, that is great. Please pray for the following who have COVID. Um, we have a long list here. Gene Johnson's grandson, Jordan, Sandra Stiles, River Pugh, Bob Jones, Sandra Sims, Joyce and Mike Atkins, Robert and Sarah Stevens, Renee Clark and Jay Taylor. Please keep them in your prayers. Pray for Clemmy Lister, who is dealing with health issues. Linda Thomas's brother, Arthur, who is in the hospital. Continue to pray for the sick and shut in and those who have lost loved ones. And as we continue, there is a women's monthly prayer meeting that will be tonight from six to seven on Zoom. Come prepared to pray for our Heavenly Father offering him praise and thanksgiving and praying for one another. Your sisters in Christ welcome your attendance. There is a calling for all young ladies between six to 30 years of age for a special Sunday school presentation to be held on July 17th. We are tentatively having a rehearsal on Tuesday, June 28th at 5 p.m. and it will be here at the church. And if you would like more information, please contact Brenda Davis. That concludes our service and announcements. We will now have the benediction from our speaker. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let us all stand.
Now may the love of God the Father and the grace of God the Son, sweet communion, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us all until we meet again. God's people said, Amen.